Hey guys, oh my god, thank you so much for being with me through this journey. Yeah, so right now I wanted to just sit with you guys and give you a bit of a life update. I'm getting ready, full charts to talk about the week ahead, even though I'm filming this on a Tuesday. And I was thinking of heading over to my friend's house for a minute to sit with him and drink coffee or tea or just to just chill, even though I have my coffee here and my cute little Yeti mug. Side note, Yeti mugs are so expensive, but... This Virgo got this one in the used section of Amazon. I knew that I wanted a Yeti mug, but I didn't want to pay the full price. And some of those things were like $78. I'm not even kidding. For like a specific color, I was like, what makes this mug so special that it needs to be $78? I kept clicking all the colors to find the one that was the cheapest. Then I found it used. I guess one of those ones that gets returned, like someone buys it and then they, they return it. So that's how I got this because I don't like paying full price for anything and I know some of y'all can relate to that. If you see me sipping, that's what it is that I'm sipping. So behind me, just ignore the Windex and all this other stuff, my sunglasses, and you might see laundry because it has been the craziest, the craziest month. It's not like how things were crazy and Philly for me because everything was like moving, moving, moving. There's all these things churning. It was all this activity. This is more like me just being hyper-focused. I've been writing the book, working with my editors, and I wanted to talk to you guys about that process and also a few other things while I'm getting ready. I just, you know, we haven't done anything like this. You guys are family at this point, so let's just sit, have some tea, have some coffee, have some snacks or not, and let's give an update. So first things first, um, for those of you guys that don't know, I'm writing a book right now. Before I wrote the book, I set the intention that when I would come to New Orleans, that I would have the opportunity to write the book. The, one of the reasons why I wanted to come to New Orleans was because it was calling me for a long time. We'll talk about that. The other reason was I, I just had had it in my spirit where I knew that I was going to come to New Orleans and a lot of what I would do is magic quietly and then offer that to you guys in my shop and then the other side would be me writing and as soon as I accepted that truth and by accepted it wasn't like I was fighting it I just in my spirit when I felt that I said okay that's what it is and that's how you know manifestation works that's how magic works when you have something in your spirit and your spirit is calling you to be aware that it's there and when you accept that reality it will manifest let's say you have something in your spirit and there are blockages to that that's when magic and intention will work you'll use that in order to draw it in so this was one of those things that I didn't even set magic for it. I didn't set my intentions for it. It was more my mind, my heart, my spirit working together and just being like, okay, I say yes to this. And then as soon as I settled, as soon as I settled into my apartment, that's when the book deal, that's when they approached me. I was saying for a long time, the first book for me to write should only be about the tarot because the tarot is essentially what kind of started my journey as far as me finding myself. So, and that's what they did. They, they, they were like, well, we need someone to write about the tarot, um, a beginner's guide. So that's what I that's what I've been working on. The process is so unique and so different. I have a friend who is also writing a book as well. We have the same we have similar experiences, but not quite exactly the same. For me personally, I I'm a words person. Like I'm I love words, I love writing, I love talking. Obviously, this is what I do, but writing a book <laughs> was I don't want to say, I don't want to say mentally beating me up, it wasn't, because that's not the right thing. It was very challenging. It was surprisingly challenging. And I'm writing about something that it is that I love, that I've dedicated my entire life to, and I still don't understand why. There's like a voice that I want to portray, there's so much information that I want to give, but there's only so much that I can give, you know what I mean? Because it's, it is a modern sky. It goes into detail about the tarot, but me personally, I want to dive into the tarot, and that could be a book that's like, all of the Harry Potter novels combined together, you know? So that's why I created the Sacred Circle Tarot School so we could talk about these things in depth and continue that conversation and make it ongoing. So with this book, the pressure, that's another thing too, the pressure of the editors, there's certain deadlines that you have to hit and there's certain deadlines that you have to meet. I canceled all of my appointments and you know, there were some people who were like, what the hell, we've been waiting three months. I get it, you know, guys, like, for those of you guys that did get upset with me about that or with my assistants who had to cancel the appointments because they were the ones who were pretty much telling me, like, you know, someone says upset and I'm just like, there's not say la vie, like, there's not much we can do. This is something that I've had on my bucket list. Me providing readings to people and me providing my services to people, that's me sharing my gift. And if I can't share that in a way that is 100% or in the way that is authentic to me and going to benefit them, then I'm not going to do it. So if I cancel the reading, don't get mad at me. So there 
was that aspect of it. Not that that bothered me, but I just felt like I had to like explain myself when I shouldn't have to explain myself. I understand their disappointment though. I do. I understand their disappointment. When I'm able to do readings again, I will do it. And I will give, like I always do for every reading, 100%. You know, most people, they have a lot of energy. And I give a lot of energy. And I experience a lot of energy while I'm doing those readings. So on average, I can only do two to three a day. And sometimes I can't do that. And one week, I can do like six. Another week, I can only do one or none. And it just depends on how my energy is. And it's not if I'm taking care of myself, although that does impact it. There's some people who are really going through a lot and when you are feeling that I feel that now I protect myself and I, I put all of the protective measures in place before I do a reading for someone else even with all of that it can still be very draining and it's energy work you guys you know I'm not scamming people out here I'm not gonna name any names but there are people who are cranking through readings and it's easy for them a lot of it a lot of it is easy for them because they're not connecting with spirit in the same way. And that's no shade, that's no read, but that is the reality, that is the truth. They don't connect with it the same way, so it very is much of just looking at the cards and interpreting the messages of the cards, so it's very easy to crank that out. Versus me, when I'm doing my readings, I'm really connecting with spirit, I'm really connecting with your guides and your, 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 what, your spirit. There's a lot that comes with that. There's a lot that comes with that, and you know, sometimes I need time for myself and I'm not going to apologize for that. You know, I, I understand that there's a need. I understand that there's a lot of people who need healing right now and messages and guidance. And this is the best way that I can do that. And then also, I want you guys to be self-sufficient. I want you guys to be able to not rely on me. And that's me as a, you know, me as Jess, your friend, your, your intuitive best friend that lives in New Orleans. Like, as a business, I would profit. I'd be a millionaire if I was having you guys come back to me and leaving like these little cliffhangers or baiting, baiting you. But I don't want that for you. I want you to be self-sufficient. When you need me, I am here for you in the way that I can be here for you. But I also want you to be able to connect with your own intuitive gifts, for you to connect with your own intuition, and to develop a relationship with your spirit guide. Because I had to do it, and it's one of the best things that's ever happened to me. And I want you to have that same gift. And what if I, God forbid, knock on wood, what if I die, you know, and I'm going to leave you guys high and dry and you're going to be lost without me, you know what I mean? I want you guys to walk beside me and we're all exploring and sharing and connecting and that's our relationship. Wow. Okay, so... I guess I had to say that because I wasn't planning on saying that. I did want to share with you guys what New Orleans has been like for me and some major moments well one major moment that happened recently while I continue to get ready this is something I want to talk to you guys and I've been wanting to share with you but I wanted to take time with myself first to absorb it and to sit with it and to speak with spirit first and just to keep it sacred before I shared it living in New Orleans like outside of the, like the haunted stuff and all that all that jazz and the people and the culture being absolutely amazing and the weather I have been hearing and seeing the same thing again and again and again and all of us can say the same stuff where when we meaning like people that I've met and crossed paths with we all say the same thing which is at some point within our conversation of meeting each other it's like well why are you here like why did you come to New Orleans like what what brought you here people all say the same thing which is like I don't know I just felt like I was called to come here when I asked them okay what is it that called you or what is it that happened to you when you came it's almost like a sequence of events that occurred to help to get them here and then when they got here there's a sequence of events that were so faded with encounters that they had or them stepping into their truth, their life path, their purpose. One person said this and I really resonated with it and they were just like, New Orleans is, and forgive me if this person watches my YouTube channel and or is one of my friends, I just can't for the life of me remember who said this, but New Orleans is essentially a womb and when you come to this womb, it's there for your healing and for your protection. You're encased in, you know, this energy that's going to nurture you and going to feed you, but it's also going to crush you in the form of like transforming you. And when you're there, you are in this process where you are transforming, you are evolving really quickly. And that looks different for everyone. That womb, when it's time, you'll outgrow her. When it's time, you'll be birthed new again. Until then, you want to stay open to that crushing process. Now, when when we say crushing, it's not that you're being crushed and there's this heavy weight or like burden or anything like that. If anything, New Orleans has been 
very protective for me, very nurturing and very like giving to me, but I've also changed so much, so much. Like I thought I was a woman before, I thought I was an adult before, I thought I was mature before because I handle on my own, I've been independent for a long time, but when I moved here, it's been what, three months? I am in no way, shape, or form the same person that it was when I left, and that's for good. It's almost humbling because if I have had these levels of experience of awakening within myself within such a small, time, small amount of time, and I thought I had learned and grown so much in Philly that I can only imagine what the, a full year here is going to look like, or two years, or three years. The other day, my friends and I were out on Frenchman Street just, you know, listening to some jazz bands. <laughs> It was like 12 o'clock in the at night, roughly around that time, like pretty late, and we ended up at a bookstore on Frenchman. I hate you so much. And the guy that was in there, he was just curious about us, you know, and asking questions. He's the nicest man ever. And he was like, what is it that you do, you know, for work? And I was like, yeah, well, I'm an astrologer. I just say astrologer and tarot reader. I don't really talk about the apothecary and stuff like that. Not because I don't want to, but it's just people end up asking all these questions about it. And saying astrology is just fast. Most people know what that means versus when they're like, what do you mean by intention oils like so when well, i don't understand and it's like okay just astrologer <laughs> i used to say professional witch but it wasn't that i wasn't comfortable with it but i'm like that opens up all these other questions too and me personally as friendly as i am sometimes i don't like talking to strangers especially about my personal life and i don't like people being like intrigued by me you know i just kind of want to get in get out so i just told him i was an astrologer and he says to me, he's like, oh, so you do tarot readings too, blah, blah, blah. And I say, yeah, 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 yeah. He says, um, he's like, I'm looking for a tarot reader. So of course, he's like, I'm looking for a tarot reader to answer why people are called to New Orleans and what happens when they come here. And I said, okay, so you, and this is the question that I ask everyone pretty much when I meet them or it comes up at some point, why did you, why were you pulled here? What is it about this place that pulled you here? Here he is saying like he wants a tarot reader and intuitive to be able to explain that to people when they get here what it would look like if they came here. So I said, well, what is your reason? You know, what is your reason for coming here? Why are you here? He starts explaining his belief in the, the, the vortex. That is the same thing that happens in Sedona where people are pulled to go to Sedona for spiritual reason. They go through their own personal transformation. I don't know why I felt the need to share that story with you guys. There's this all encompassing energy that's like almost like a god or goddess it's like the spirit of new orleans again like i say that or i say mama nola in everything here and it's a vibe it's an essence it's spirit and it's not you know spirit when i say spirit i'm not saying like ghosts or anything like that or paranormal paranormal spirit activity it's a spirit this presence that is all of new orleans all of it all of the history all of the magic, all of the moment that calls people and says, come to my womb, or rejects them and expels them and crushes them, kill, like, doesn't kill them, hopefully. I can imagine that it does because it is really, really powerful. Either she loves you and she accepts you and says, this is your home, or she, she will reject you and expel you out and push you out and you're going to have all the worst time here. And there is no in between. So far, she's been so good to me. I mean, I literally pray and honor her. That needs to lead me to my next experience. Again, I've been kind of, in my personal life, I've been feeling the pressure, but it's like a spiritual pressure, meaning that I'm getting like a little clam and I'm t being turned into this oyster. I thought I had grown so much. I thought I had experienced a lot because in my life I've experienced a lot, but I come here and within a short amount of time, I'm like, oh, we have a lot of growth that needs to happen and I need to mature and I'm gonna become a woman. Like I am becoming, an actual woman you know and obviously I'm a woman but I don't know what that means but I feel like a lot of women and you guys will understand what it is that I'm saying but I was stepping into my womanhood my personal power even more 
but it was not so much of me manipulating by manipulating I mean like working with outside forces and magic because I had you know done that I had stepped into my power with that but it was more about what I was doing for others and now it was like I need to serve myself and I was really not struggling with that but I'm like what does that look like you know I, I I'm, I'm a Virgo and we're so ruled to be a service to others it's ingrained in us to put others before ourselves but a part of me stepping into my womanhood was me stepping into my power to nurture myself and to mirror actually what Mama Nola the spirit of New Orleans was showing me and teaching me that she does for everyone else and I need to do that for myself and I was just learning from this higher energy there's one spot that I go to a lot and this one day, I, after a meditation the night before, I felt really called to go back to the spot, even though I had things to do. So I respect that, I listen to that. And as soon as I step foot into this spot, into this, you know, area, my phone dies. And I was at like 60% battery. There was no reason for it to die. And I was like, damn it, because I was gonna take photos. It's a beautiful day. So then I'm just forced to kind of like not be distracted because I didn't know why I was there, you know? I just was there. I was thinking maybe I was just there to enjoy the sunshine and spirit was just leading me to take a break, but no. So my phone dies and I'm kind of forced to be like totally present. So I just sat there. And I was kind of guided to like sit with my butt in the dirt, you know, in the grass and then fold my legs. Then I just, you know, put my head back and I was just feeling the sunshine and I folded my arms out. And as soon as I did that, I literally felt this heavy presence around me, like heavy presence, meaning like it's the same experience that I had when I felt God for the first time and I wasn't a believer in God. So I'm sitting there and I have my arms unfolded and I'm like, oh my God, you know, there's something here. This is this is spirit of New Orleans, you know? And I'm just like breathing it and I start speaking to her and I say, okay, you know, I'm coming to you. I don't have anything to ask. I just wanna, I guess I just wanna be in your presence. I feel like maybe I was called to, you know, sit with you now. Anything that you need to tell me, I'm open to hearing, but I do ask for your protection. I do ask for your love. I do ask for your healing. And if you're going to speak, I ask that you speak clearly so that I can hear it and so that I can understand speak to me in, in a way that I understand and I just sat there and I felt you know felt the sun I felt this energy it was quiet for a while and I didn't open up my eyes and um, I start getting these visual the visions of things and some of them I'm not a lot of them I'm not gonna say because they're predi like predictions premonitions of what was to come and wh where my life is taking me and things that I needed to do so I was just kind of clocking them in my head and so that I can remember them but one of them was a skull of a, a crow. Sometimes when spirit shows me something, it's like I may have never seen it before, but it comes with information. So I'm like, oh, this is a skull, a, a skull from a crow. So I'm going through these series of premonitions and visions that were coming through through to me. Spirit of Norla, Nola or Mama Nola, she says, "What is it that you want? Why are you here? What is it that you want from me? What can I give to you?" And um, I'm thinking in my head, like, "Give to me? Should I even be asking for anything from you? Like, you've given me so much enough. Like, just the fact that I live here." But she was just a garden, you know, or like not a garden, but a space. And um, she has things that she was going to offer, and she was like, "What? Which of these do you want? Like, what is it that you want?" So I tell her what I want for my career, my personal, my love life, etc., etc. She's like, you know, just kind of hearing me and listening. And everything that I said to her was yes, 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 yes. And there's this main thing that I've been wanting. I needed a lot of healing when it comes to it because of my own personal experiences. I didn't mention it. <laughs> like, I didn't mention it at all to Spirit. That's my phone in the background for those of you guys checking your phone. I didn't mention it to Spirit of you know, or Mama Nola. I don't like saying Spirit of New Orleans, but Mama Nola, I didn't mention it to her. So she said, what else? And I said, no, that's it. And she was like, like her energy was like, no, you have something on your heart, ask for it. And said, okay, well this. And then she said, and that's yours. After I did that, like after I said that, I was just quiet. And I, even me confessing that to, to you know, Mama Nola, I felt like, oh God. Like, I haven't really told anybody that it's something that I wanted or something that I was working towards or that I needed healing with. And as soon as I did that, literally, my position that my body was in was in the grass. And I felt this, from the earth, this presence come up, this energy come up into my... And this is crazy, I know, but I'm sure you guys can understand. But it came up and 
heal. It was like root chakra healing, totally. And stayed within below my sacral and into my root chakra and made this space in my womb. So specifically my womb and created this space of like total healing in my womb energy and made made it made space so that there was I wasn't asking for a child or anything like that, but so that I could be ready and I would need to be a woman. I would need to be mature. I would need to be all of these things that I was learning how to be even now. Like I thought like, oh, I'm a woman. I have a vagina. I have boobs. I'm this, I'm that. So I'm a woman. Like, no, you know, those things make you a woman, but they don't make you a woman. You know what I mean? And or that next level of goddess energy. Sorry about that. So this next level of moving from the maid to the mother. Maybe that's where I'm at. Maybe that's the next stage for me. You know, it's not something that needs to be rushed, but it's what I'm preparing for, you know, that aspect of myself. And maybe I hope that that does include children. That wasn't what I was praying over or what it was I was asking for. But there is, even if you are not a mother, you know, you're still, when you step into your womanhood, you are in that phase of mother where even if you don't have children, your energy, your presence is strong and it's nurturing and it's giving and you are supporting life. You are creating life. You are building life in some way. For some women, that means that you have a child and that you are creating child. For, for others, it's nurturing and building a business or nurturing and building a community or creating change or transformation at some point in your life and only you can do it the way that you can do it like a, a man or a maiden or a maid or a maiden or a crone cannot do it in the way that the mother energy is and if you guys don't know what that is about i can make a video about the maid the mother and the crone that energy and like that the unfolding of goddess energy within ourselves as women and how sacred that is and what that looks like i get like i guess that was just i had entered into that like i was initiated into that under the protection, under the guidance, under the pressure, that beautiful pressure of Mama Nola. And I was so honored. And I just sat there. I had major healing that happened. A lot of it was root chakra and sacral chakra, which deals with like self-worth and safety and security. Everything serves its purpose. If I didn't have those root chakra issues of, you know, feeling safe and self-worth and self-value, I wouldn't have propelled my business. You know, I wouldn't have grown so much and learned so much be because of that. Like I needed to create security for myself. I needed to create stability for myself. And I needed to do it in the way that tested my patience and tested my faith in order for me to experience that level of healing. So again, when I say to you guys like with Bahati Life, like, yeah, it's for you, but it's a lot, it's, a lot of it's for me too. I needed this just as much as other people needed this. And that's how it works. When you are in a space where you are doing what you love and what you're called to do, it is so healing not only for others but also for you and that's why you must ask for your heart's desires that's why you must you know respond to those calls invest in yourself because you doing what is right for you is essentially also healing the world that's how you know you're doing your purpose and you just get better at it and you develop it and that's that's how the world should be and also in the spiritual realm that is what it is that's just the cycle that's everything is connected so that's how everything should be no no one should be totally benefiting and profiting off of anybody else it is an exchange but our society right now is really struggling with that but we are getting closer and closer to that final destination of getting to that space where everyone is connected everyone is equal everyone is listening to their passions and not questioning it because why would they question it of course it makes sense you following your passion should not also mean that you have to live in lack or you won't be provided for or you won't be safe you following your passion and you doing what you're good at and what God created you to do actually ensures your safety, your security, and more than that, it ascends you. So back to my, my moment in the grass. I'm sitting there and I'm just like, whoa, I did not know that I needed that and that I would need this healing in order to get to my mother phase within my life. It makes sense now, like it, it totally makes sense to me now, but that's not something that I would have been able to figure out or know on my own. Thank God that I work with spirit, you know, and I work with my guides. So then I stay there for a little while and I just kind of bask in all that good goodness, that good energy. And I look down at my phone after all of the, I must have spent like two hours just in this space of just getting healing, you know, and say thank you to Mama Nola and thank you to the elements and spirit and my angels and my guides and also to my ancestors and my own little ritual. I pick my stuff up and walking out and I look down at my phone and my phone turns back on <laughs> at 60% battery. So I was like, I'm, I wasn't crazy. I'm walking back and then I, I, I'm feeling so good. I'm feeling on top of the world. And then I turn a corner and I'm like, damn, I feel so sad right now. Like I feel really, really sad. I'm like, why do I feel so sad? Like, did I not just have like the most amazing healing just now? And then I look down and there's a crow 
like a dead crow and it was brand new like it was brand new and I you know you could tell that it had just died because there weren't like flies on it there it wasn't you know being picked at or weird or ants or anything like that like that thing was brand new and as soon as I saw it I was like okay this is this it felt like such a sacrifice it felt like something was sacrificed in that moment when I was at the at the park and again it connected back to the the skull of the crow that I received within my meditation. I just was like, thank you. And I haven't been the same since. As an animal totem, as an animal messenger, the crow connects to signs, messengers that are mysterious, that are oracles, that, you know, shift your life and change your life and transform your life for the better, but you need to be open to it. You need to be open to that level of protection. And I'm not gonna say that it brings good news all the time, but it brings messages of transformation and mystery and magic. And to be open to that. And it also is connected to the shadow sides, which a lot of people are afraid of, but it's not anything to be afraid of. It's, if anything, it's more healing, it's very feminine, it's very dark, it's very quiet and protected, and that we have those aspects within ourselves. Even now, as I'm sitting here, don't I kind of look like a crow? <laughs> Actually, I have an animal totem book. Let me read it to you for just a second. Now, I'm getting old. <laughs> okay guys, so I'm reading from Animal Spirit Guides from Stephen Farmer. From his book, he says, If crow shows up, it means you're on the verge of manifesting something you've been working toward for a while. Be very careful, be very watchful over the next couple of days for any clear omens or signs that will guide you and teach you. Ex uh, expect a big change very soon. You've noticed something that's out of balance or an injustice that hasn't been addressed and it's important to speak up about it. You're about to get a glimpse into some future events that affects you directly. Now, that thing about an injustice, do you guys remember that I kept saying, like, I keep pulling the justice card. I know what the justice card represents and what it means, but its meaning was changing for me as my life was kind of becoming an example of justice within one area of my life and I needed to be more open to it. My ego, if I followed my ego, I'd be like, oh, I know what justice card means. Like, I'm a tarot reader, I've been doing this for years, 20 years plus now, or there's nothing more that I can learn from this. The reality is that in the spiritual realm, we are always learning, we are always growing, and in order for that to happen, you have to be open to it. So if spirit kept presenting the same message, and still to this day is presenting the justice energy to me, I need to be more open to it. Now, at this point in my life, I can't talk openly about it with anyone else, because it is something that is sacred to me. I haven't even talked to my friends or my family about it. It's just between me and spirit right now, and I'm going to keep it that way, but maybe in the future I will share what I'm learning from the Justice card. It's not anything negative, but it is about like cause and effect and law and order and what that looks like in balance for me personally. So the next thing they, they say is also check out the raven with the crow. So I did look at that, and when the raven shows up, it says magic is in the air, Something special is about to happen. Pay attention to dreams and visions. Sorry, I don't know if you guys saw that. Especially colorful and powerful ones as these are indicative of prophecy. In any undertaking or in a relationship, be, be very clear as far as what your intentions are because whatever they are, that's what will manifest. You're gradually shape-shifting to a more confident, powerful, and spiritually based you that will continue to emerge the more you let go of your old self. You'll observe an increasing number of synchronistic events over the next few days, so just notice these, appreciate them, and don't try to figure them out. Okay guys, so that's... What has been going on? That's a little bit of a life update. It was kind of chatty, of course it was, but that's what that's where I'm at, that's what I'm doing. I would like to hear your own stories as far as almonds and signs that have been showing up for you. Omens, almonds, call it whatever you will. Tomato, tomato. But leave it down in the comments. I am gonna be reading them and connecting with them and any visions or prophecies that is that you're receiving, I wanna hear those as well, especially if they're for me and especially if they're for our world or your own life. Have you been to New Orleans? That's another thing too I want to hear from you guys. Have you been to New Orleans? Do you feel called to come to New Orleans? Do you, did you come to New Orleans and you hate it? Yeah, leave those things down in the comment. And anything else that comes to you, let's say you want to pull a card, tarot card, or you know your take on something that I've said, leave it down in the comments because I am going to read it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!